the morning markets kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida, 830 a.m. In one hour left to go in, excuse me, left to go. We'll get it started. One hour to go until the opening bell Wednesday morning. And we got markets starting off in positive territory. Dow futures up 136 points, trading at 28,842. Got S&Ps positive by 11, trading at 3290. It's almost a solid 60 S&P points now off the low that we had on Monday. NASDAQ futures up 46 points, trading at 9151. We've got oil up this morning, trading up 47 cents at 5399. 53.95. The 10 year yield, 1.62%. We'll start things off this morning. We'll start it off with the VIX. As you'd expect, quite a run from the lows we've had in the indices a couple days ago to the highs now, 15.24, as volatility gets sucked out of this market and indices continue to trade higher. Lots of earnings this week going on. We're going to start it off with the indices before we jump into Apple and the likes of we have McDonald's this morning, Starbucks, AMD, GE. Wall Street 30, Dow 30, 28,849, making pre-market session highs right now as we speak. You back things up to yesterday, the close of action. There's your 4 p.m. closing bell at about 28,700. You see the volatility and you see that we trade higher for most of the overnight session. S&P 500, pretty similar action. Last night, we got a pop at around 8, p 8 p.m. Eastern time. We were sitting about 32.76. We make it as high in the futures as 32.91, just off that level of 32.88. There's your NASDAQ 100, trading at 91.48, right up there near session highs as well. Crude oil, we mentioned, trading higher. We get the EIA inventory number for crude two hours from right now, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. I'll be on the air with Tom for those. Crude catching a bid up to 54.27. And the gold contract trading at 15.69, actually made it to a low last night of 1562 and the euro us dollar under the 110 level trading at 109.97 getting right into the earnings the biggest of them all last night apple rising as earnings and iphone sales quote unquote smash expectations quite a quarter for apple taking in more than a billion dollars a day in revenue quite a quarter indeed apple's revenue up nine percent to 91.8 billion dollars 90 days, 91.8 billion, not bad. Beating its own guidance, Apple's earnings partially powered by iPhone revenue up 8% on the strength of that iPhone 11, the new iPhone models, $55.96 billion. Apple trying to become a services company away from the iPhone, but pretty remarkable. In the quarter, $60 billion straight iPhone sales. Breaking it down further, there's your earnings per share, $499, the estimate only $455. There's the revenue number, 91.8 billion versus 88.5. You think about it, so this is the holiday quarter, usually their biggest quarter. It's remarkable to think that as we come into next year, Apple could have potentially a $100 billion revenue quarter as they approach it. I mean, just staggering numbers. iPhone revenue, 55.96. They were only looking for 51.62. The thing to remember is, they have been trying to transition to a revenue company for services away from the iPhone. But boy, oh boy, they really crushed it out of the park in iPhone sales. Does this warrant the multiples that Apple is trading at right now? That's the discussion you're hearing around Wall Street right now because services revenue actually misses 12.7 billion versus 13.07. Other products now a $10 billion quarterly number, 10 billion versus 9.52. The margins they beat, 38.4 versus 38.1. And then in terms of revenue, 63 to 67 billion. They got quite a range there. The market, though, only expecting 62.5, so above it across the board. And margins in terms of guidance, 38 to 39. The expectation, 38.2. Checking in on Apple, up about a little more than 2% last time I checked. Spiked all the way to 327.90. Now trading 323.96. Closed yesterday at 317. Apple had quite a banner day yesterday, though, itself. Went from 307 up to almost 317, $10, up almost 3% yesterday ahead of the earnings and still looking open higher this morning. 
Other companies out there reporting this morning, you got Boeing. They'll have quite an interesting conference call, I imagine, this morning. Boeing posting first annual loss in more than two decades as the 737 MAX crisis continues. We'll jump over to their chart in a moment, but last time I checked, Boeing trading higher on these numbers. Boeing posting its first annual loss since 1997 due to that 737 MAX crisis. Boeing's bill from the crashes has roughly doubled to nearly $19 billion. Boeing said it lost $636 million in 2019, marking the company's first annual loss since 1997, in stark contrast to the profit it posted, $10.46 billion in 2018, before that second crash. The dismal results come as Boeing struggling through the crisis of the 737 MAX. Boeing reported a loss of $233 a share for the fourth quarter last year, Revenue in the last three months of the year dropped 37 percent to almost 18 billion compared to 28.34 billion. You got to keep in mind, they got all these planes just sitting there in storage waiting to sell as they can't push them out to their customers. The debacles cost Boeing's cost to Boeing are rising to more than 18 billion. The company said roughly double what it outlined in the previous quarter. That amount includes an additional $2.6 billion pre-tax charge to compensate airlines and other MAX customers because of the grounding. Boeing had taken a $5.6 billion pre-tax charge in the second quarter to compensate its customers. Jumping over to Boeing shares this morning, as I said, last time I checked, there you go. Quite a charge higher on those numbers. The market likes certainty. Maybe the market was just a little bit worried that things could be even worse coming into this. Not really sure. Any type of certainty. $328.01, that's $12. That's up more than 4% right now for Boeing from where they closed yesterday at 316.56. Other stocks, big week of earnings this week. This week alone, 145 stocks of the S&P 500 reporting. I believe we get Facebook after the bell. Jumping over though, McDonald's earnings. The headline here, beating Wall Street estimates. Last time I checked on Wall, uh, McDonald's, trading lower. We'll jump over to their chart in a moment. But Boeing, beating Wall Street estimates helped by price hikes as U.S. traffic Foot traffic decline. Now, Walmart, one of, uh, excuse me, Walmart, McDonald's, one of the stories out there in terms of closing stores in China. But getting into the numbers, earnings per share, buck 97 versus a buck 96. Revenue, right in line, 5.3 versus 5.3. Global same store sales. These are always just mammoth numbers. 5.9% versus 5.2. That's across the entire globe. It's just remarkable that they can beat. Um, even when the expectation's 5.2. But jumping over to McDonald's, Big Mac shares this morning. Yeah, got a spike to 214, but as I mentioned, actually trade down to 208, looking to open marginally lower McDonald's this morning, trading at 209.20. And other earnings out there on the front. As we wrap up this segment, we'll get into this one after the bell, but we got Star Starbucks outpaces earnings estimates, but warns coronavirus could hit Fiscal 2020. We'll leave that lingering as we go to the break. Checking back in on the futures markets, S&Ps right now. There is your chart. There is the low that I mentioned for the fear on Monday, 32.33. There is the gap from Sunday night to the open on Monday. We've basically closed that gap now as the markets charge back coronavirus now up to almost 6,000 people in China. We'll touch on that as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Markets in positive territory. S&P futures positive by 10. That's about three-tenths percent in the green. NASDAQ futures positive by 43. That's about a half a percent. Dow futures positive 141. That's about a half a percent positive as well. Jumping back to the news stories in terms of earnings, Starbucks outpaces earnings estimates but warns coronavirus could hit fiscal 2020. So Starbucks, their numbers, earnings per share, 79 cents versus 76 expensive, expected. Revenue, 7.1 versus 7.1. And again, a huge global same-store sales number, 5% versus 4.4 expected. The magnitude of the impact will depend on the duration of store closures as we work with local authorities to manage the situation and protect our partners and customers. Chief Financial Officer talking about the China that the coffee chain says closed more than half of its Chinese locations but expects that will be temporary. Starbucks, a huge footprint in China, so I'm sure that's going to be something, and as they're saying, could materially affect them. But Starbucks shares looking basically flat this morning ahead of it. Closed yesterday at 88.60. Their earnings out last night and looking to open basically right where they closed at last evening. Other earnings out last night, you had AMD shares falling on softer revenue projections. So their numbers, excluding items, $0.32 cents a share versus 31 Revenue, 2.13 versus 2.11. Revenue grew 50% on an annualized basis in the quarter that ended December 28th. Revenue growth for 2019 at 6.73 at, billion was up 4%. Revenue for AMD's computing and graphics segment, including graphics cards and PC chips, totaled 1.66 billion, up almost 69% year over year. Now, these are huge numbers, but a lot of this already priced in to a company like AMD. There's your chart, closed yesterday at 50.50, looking open at about 48.25, but for some context, that's a five minute chart. You back this up for the year, there is the price in of all of those revenue gains that is already potentially in that equity. Other news out there, we could just keep going folks, and we will. eBay with their earnings out last night as well, Forecast disappoints amid competition from Amazon and Walmart. eBay forecast first quarter revenue below analyst estimates on Tuesday. Let's see what we got. We got for the first quarter, eBay expects revenue between 2.55 versus 2.6. Analysts were looking for 2.64. However, the company's revenue 2.81, excuse me, 2.82 billion in the fourth quarter ahead of the 2.81 they were looking for to see how eBay is trading this morning. Closed yesterday at 36.21, looking to open at about 34.52.
And one of the biggest movers out here this morning, how about GE? Trading up now 7% the headline, earnings top expectations. GE's closely watched metric of industrial free cash flow came in at $2.3 billion for 2019, topping its own guidance of between zero and $2 billion. Not bad. Their numbers, $0.21 cents a share versus $0.18 cents expected. You have revenue of $26.24 billion. The number they were looking for was 25.57. While the company's quarterly results were better than expected, GE's 2020 earnings forecast came in below what analysts surveyed. GE said it expects earnings of 50 to 60 cents a share next year, below 67 cents they were looking. GE's forecast for industrial free cash flow next year, also higher than expected, though. That probably a big number as they got to get their, their act in order. Cash flow, a big deal. Cash flow will come in at two to four billion in 2020, notably above the 1.2. The market seems to be reacting to the fact that they're going to have cash to turn around this company. Look at that charging higher. Close yesterday at 11.73, looking to open at 12.55 this morning. Quite a number. And other news out here: weekly mortgage applications surging over seven percent as rates fall on coronavirus fears. The 10-year right now, I believe we're sitting at about 1.62%. Yes, we are, 1.622 to be exact. Mortgage, mortgage rates fell to their lowest level since November, and that sent current borrowers and potential home buyers to their lenders. App, applications to refinance a home loan, which are most sensitive to biggest interest rate swings, increased 8% for the week and were 140%, excuse me, 146% higher than a year ago. Mortgage applications to purchase a home increased 5% for the week and were a strong 17% higher than one year ago. Overall mortgage application volume jumped 7.2% last week from the previous week, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association Seasonally Adjusted Index. The average contract interest rate for 30-year fixed rate mortgage with conforming loan balances decreased to 3.81% from 387 with points ranging, excuse me, with points increasing from 0.28 for loans with a 20% down payment. Still a, a pretty magnificent number, 3.8% in a 30-year. Big numbers, as you'd expect, as we get a decrease in rates with the market escalating to the downside a bit. In terms of what else we have happening, I encourage you to check out on the front page of TFNN. We get the morning market report up there this morning. We talk about the Apple beating the iPhone sales, some of the headlines that I've talked about in the program this morning. Morning market report. So we have the futures numbers. We have Apple numbers in here that I got into as well. There's your Apple chart this morning. I wanted to touch on the big week of earnings. So today, the two biggest of them all for today, Facebook and Microsoft. Some of the others we already touched on. We have Boeing. AT&T, I'll pull up that chart in a moment. McDonald's, we touched on as well. After the bell, also Tesla. Quite a chart. We'll pull up Facebook, Microsoft, and Tesla right now to see how they are trading ahead of their earnings. Facebook closed yesterday at 217.79, getting a pop this morning. Okay, there we go. I was making sure. Earnings on 129 after the market. Think or swim, they're just letting us know. Get ready for them. And 221 is where it's trading at right now. I love to get into the Analyze tab. Let's see what kind of a move we're expecting on Facebook as they're going to look for their ad sales. $9.60 right now is what the market is pricing in. Basically, if you're buying a put and you're buying a call at the money for almost one day, that's what you're going to be paying combined for a one-way one move, one way or the other, about $10 almost on Facebook they're pricing in. Microsoft. Microsoft looking at about a $5.46 price movement. Closed yesterday at $165.46. And Tesla, let's see how much volatility the market's looking for Tesla. How about that one, folks? $52 as you get a little bit of volatility priced into the chart of Tesla and that equity. Still quite a number, $566.90. Tesla closed at yesterday. The market pricing in $52 that that price may move, that that chart may move. It would make sense. If you're going to be selling a put and a call to somebody and you're going to be absorbing premium, how much premium are you going to want to absorb on a stock like Tesla? If you're going to give them the availability of defined risk, I'm going to need some premium if I'm going to be absorbing that volatility. And then let's pull up the charts. So there's Facebook. We touched on 
There's your Microsoft chart. Closed yesterday at 165.46. Looking to open at 167.27. And we said on Microsoft, $5 and change. The price that's factored in for the one-day move on Microsoft. And Tesla closed yesterday at one, excuse me, 566.90, up at about 572.50 right now. Tesla, though, excuse me, $52 priced into the movement of that equity as they report earnings after the belt today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back to wrap things up in the program. Don't forget, I'm going to talk about it when we get back tonight. Larry Pezzavento, 4 till 5.30. He's got a subscriber webinar. Check it out on the front page. We'll talk about what he's going to be going into when we get back from this break. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Markets pulling back a bit from where we were. S&P up about seven points right now. Dow futures up 122. Nasdaq up 32. As I mentioned, front page of TFNN tonight, 4 p.m., right after Tom's program. Larry going to be in there with subscribers to Fibonacci 24-7, 90-minute webinar. If you can't attend live, this will be archived. You can watch it right on your members page as many times as you'd like if you can't be in there from 4 till 530 
a number of talk topics he's going to be talking about, folks, how to find and update the key harmonic numbers to trade against in futures, forex, and stocks, how to translate three go-to patterns into supply and demand and how to use them for entry, the continued importance of the opening price in 2020, how to use Fibonacci numbers to indicate a continuation move, how to use the time of day when taking a position and for entry into longer trends, covering how to read supply and demand and how, in combination with his ABCD patterns, you can control risk and maximize profit in today's algo-dominated markets. Just a quick glimpse, folks, for what he puts out. This is the update he put out for subscribers this morning. He's got a video about the Dow Jones up there, crude, crude oil video up there for subscribers, a gold video up there for subscribers. You can access all, to all of this immediately. And also, Sunday nights puts out actually a, a, a just so comprehensive. You gain access to this every week. Just to give you an idea, Sunday night video, charts of the week. I mean, I'm just scrolling so fast, folks, because this is what he puts out every single weekend, along with updates, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, videos. You see what's going on. He's got the FANG charts in there for his subscribers. He's got futures charts in there. So check it out right on the front page of TFNN. You can sign up, 30-day money-back guarantee, whether it's monthly, six-month, a year, Add some savings to that subscription. Still comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And I'll be in there with Larry tonight, his subscribers. I encourage you to check it out on the front page of TFNN. And do it right now, because then you'll be ready. Because Larry Pesavento, coming up live right after this program with Trade What You See, kicks things off every day for the opening bell at TFNN. I appreciate you joining me, folks. Stay tuned. we got Larry Pesavento coming up right now.